maybe as a way to begin, I was talking with my 22-year-old daughter the other day, uh, kind of about some life choices, and um, she stopped me. She said, Dad, it's too much information. I said, what do you mean? I said, I just started. She said, you know, my brain is like a post-it note. It, it, it's got just so many, so much lines you can write. And I said, okay. I said, well, let's, let's think about one thing. So my daughter's name is Lily. That's what I want to use today is the Lily principle. I want you to think about one thing. And that thing is, why should I be concerned about the cost of radiology? So when this is over, the only thing I want you to think about is that, because I think, um, I think you'll have some answers. So I want, to, uh, I want to cover just three or four things today pretty quickly. One, uh, what's going on with radiology in, in, in today in the marketplace, in healthcare? It's pretty amazing. I mean, it is the, the technology, the applications for the technology um, is just going crazy. But, but one thing that's very apparent is there's a big difference in terms of charges around radiology tests, particularly high-tech imaging, MRI, CT, PET scans, nuclear studies. I mean, wide variation in, in these tests. And I want to give you some examples of that, talk about why that uh, is out there, and then talk about some alternatives, some options that you can look at to better manage your radiology costs. On the left here, you see the, the first x-ray ever taken, Rodigen's uh, actually hand x-ray of his wife. You can actually see a ring on, uh, on a ring finger. And then here's an example of the technology that's out there today. I, I, I'll stop by asking, how many people in here have ever had an MRI, CT, or PET scan? So three quarters of the room, uh, pretty prevalent. And that that... That is only going to increase and increase over the years, and I'll, I'll talk more about that. Um, so technology is, is, is going crazy. It has been for 15 years. I mean, it's hard to believe, when you look at radiology, hard to believe that um, the CT scan was invented in 1972. I mean, it wasn't that long ago. It didn't really get into hospitals, got out of teaching hospitals, in the late 70s, didn't get into hospitals mainstream until the early 80s. And that was well before MRI was invented, well before PET scans were invented and some of the nuclear medicine today. So technology hadn't been around that, that long. If you were to look at CPT codes, you look at the 70,000 series of CPT codes, which is uh, radiology, uh, they doubled in the last 10 years. No other area of healthcare has had that type of, of innovation, and it continues to grow. You, you look at these scans here from a CT scan. We've moved from anatomical imaging, where you're looking at just, just tissue and organs. We've moved to molecular imaging, where you're looking at what's happening in the body real time. You're looking at all types of, of radioisotopes that are tagged or um, uh, with different chemicals to find out different things in the body. So you see uh, the, the, the second scan from the left is a PET scan. Uh, it uses FDG. FDG is a, a glucose tag on the radio. So it's radio tagged with glucose. When a body starts to develop a tumor, it consumes a great deal of energy to grow that tumor. A tumor or, or energy in the body is glucose. It's sugar. That's what drives the body. So the intake or the uptake for the FDG is where all that production is going on. So it immediately goes to the tumor because that's the greatest intake of glucose in the body. Proton highlights the gamma ray and it shows a tumor. Same patient on the left doesn't show that in the CT. So the technology is incredible. It's going to continue to um, going to continue to grow and to expand and with good reason. And the real reason it's growing is because of Moore's Law. Moore's Law, anybody knows what that is? Any computer geeks? Moore's Law is um, that the semiconductor is going to duplicate its, its uh, capacity every two years. And it has done that. Since 1964, it's doubled. Chip, that's the computing power of a chip. That, that's, that's the reason we went from the basement in radiology to the boardroom. And it's a big business. You know, in the U.S., there will be over a billion radiology scans this year. 
Um, and, and it's interesting, the U.S. is a little less than 5% of the world population, but we consume about 15% of all the radiology procedures on an annual basis. So it's a big business, uh, and, and it will continue to be a big business. Yeah, a big aha for a lot of benefit administrators or brokers that I talk to is if you were to, to distill down your claims dollars, you'd find that about 12 cents of every dollar goes to radiology. That, that's a big number. It's a lot like the PBM discussion yesterday. If you were to, I, I've been in healthcare for 30 years in, in, in insurance. If you were to go back 15 years ago, it's the same trend. It's the same story. Um, where, where uh, uh, PBM or pharmacy drug was 10, 15, 20 cents of the healthcare dollar. You're looking at 12 cents of it with radiology and it's probably going to grow over the next few years just based on the population of the, uh, or the population getting older and, and the uh, capacity of imaging in the marketplace. It, it's growing at 20, 25 percent a year. You know, I'm not an actuary, but if you grow 25% a year, I think you double your cost in three years. Well, we've seen that happen the last nine years. So the costs have tripled, quadrupled in, uh, in, in the last decade around radiology. It's really being driven by high-tech imaging, by MRI, CT, and, and PET scans. That's where the real growth is. So, so if you were to look at radiology and you were to say, okay, out of that, out of radiology, how much of the cost is driven by high-tech imaging? It'd be 60 to 70 percent. Uh, Low-tech imaging, x-ray, flat film, DEXA scan, ultrasound, it, it's pretty much paid by Medicare. There's not a lot of growth there. It's pretty flat. But the growth, what drives uh, rate inflation in radiology is high-tech imaging. It's MRI, CT, uh, uh, PET scans. A big thing that, that's also an aha for a lot of people around radiology tests and what I want to center a lot of my discussion on today is the difference between hospital pricing for imaging tests and freestanding imaging center or outpatient imaging center non-owned hospital facilities for the same imaging tests. Oftentimes using the same or better equipment uh, than, than the other. And I want to spend some time on that because that will give you some insight into really where radiology has been and where it's going. I, I do want to take a little bit of a, uh, of a dive here. This is my favorite slide. My office had sent this to me. I sent it back to them. They sent me back the same thing because I told them what I wanted to look at. So I want to point out some differences between hospital reimbursement and freestanding imaging center reimbursement. You, you see facility used up here, that's, that's CMS code talk for hospital. Non-facility is non-hospital and facility. But uh, big differences are a hospital bills with a, a UB04 claim form, whereas an imaging center bills for, uh, or bills for radiology with uh, a HICFA 1500 uh, a claim form. Hospital uses revenue codes to describe a broad claim. So for example, you might have an MRI lumbar spine with or without contrast and you'll get a, a, a 610 uh, revenue code for a general. The HICFA claim forms much more specific uses CPT codes. So you know exactly what, what the, the test was uh, performed. They're paid differently. Hospitals use ambulatory uh, classification, APICs on their procedures, and uh, HICFA uses um, RVRVS. That's an important, important thing, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute. And th the main thing is this highlighted area here. It's two different fee schedules, and, and, and you're going to see why that plays into the discrepancy in, in pricing here in a minute. Um, hospitals use HOPS, which is the outpatient, uh, hospital outpatient perspective payment system. That's their fee schedule. The um, imaging centers and physicians use the Medicare physician fee schedule. Th that's an important thing to understand. And so now I'm going to take you to a little bit of politics to, to help you understand more of why that is important. Uh, any of you familiar with the Deficit Reduction Act? Okay, that's what kept uh, the, the government in business back in, uh, back in 2005, 2006, um, much like the sequester 
uh, today. But one of the things, radiology and Medicare Part B, which is what is paid under for imaging centers, had doubled their costs. They had gone from, uh, from the year 2000, about $6 billion, to the year 2005, about uh, 12 to 13 billion dollars. So they doubled their costs. Politicians were thinking, wow, these guys are just killing us on radiology. But in fact, what was happening was the, the advent of all this technology that was coming about that doctors were now using to replace old technology to diagnose, to treat, to, to um, indicate uh, uh, disease states in the body. So what Congress did, they said, well, we need to do something about this imaging, and we're going to um, make imaging centers under Part B take the lesser of the Medicare fee schedule or the hospital outpatient prospective payment system. They have to take the lesser of the two for their fee. So that was about a 25 to 30% reduction for imaging centers in terms of, of what they were getting versus what they were going to get after the Deficit, Deficit Reduction Act. They also got rid of multiple procedures where, say you had a CT abdomen performed, well, before that, um, you would bill for both of those in their totality, like they were separate exams. They, they combined that and said, no, if you, if you scan the patient for, say, like an abdomen pelvic scan, CT abdomen pelvic, on the same day, we're only gonna pay you 25% um, for the uh, second scan. So th those, are, those are high volume tests. That was a big haircut for imaging centers as well. Utilization factor, I'm not gonna spend any time on RVUs because that's a whole other presentation, but Medicare Part B, you get uh, reimbursed by RVUs, so relative uh, value unit, which is a big uh, calculation to do. It includes uh, uh, the practice time, the mal malpractice expense, it includes the physician time, there's a conversion factor, there's a geographic index factor, there's a, um, just a, a lot in that to get to what you get paid. And depending on the test, the number of RVUs, say for example, you're doing an MRI with and without contrast of the brain, it's the highest RVU value, about 15 RVUs, and if you get paid you know, $100, that RVU's worth $100 after your calculation, you make $1,500 under Medicare and I'm gonna talk about the difference in, in hospitals uh, to a minute, but you can, you can kind of see imaging centers have had a little bit taken away, taken away, taken away, taken away. With the Affordable Care Act, you've got multiple procedures um, that, that have been reduced. You've got practice expense that has been reduced in the RVU calculation. You've got just, just all types of things. Now, a couple of things that, are, that are, ha have happened this year, they're coming down the road. You have a, a tax on equipment, 2.3% over a million dollars, which most high-tech imaging equipment is over a million dollars. They've cut the interest rate that imaging centers can, can claim on, on the equipment, which is part of the RVU calculation on how you get reimbursed. One of the, the, the most highly referred tests, the lower and upper extremity MRI, has been cut 25, 28%. And, and a big thing for imaging centers the equipment utilization factor, which is a big part of the RVU, the practice part of the RVU calculation, for years and years it was 50%. And what that meant is on a 50-hour week, that equipment's only used 50% of the time. Well, it went up to 75%, now it's at 90%. So as that has gone up, reimbursement goes down for imaging. So owning an imaging center for the last 10 years has not been a good thing because you've you, you saw with the Deficit Reduction Act, if you had a 10% profit, that was gone. After tax margin, that was gone. You're, you are now uh, underwater. And uh, with all these, other, all these other aspects that are happening, you've seen a lot of imaging centers go out of business, you've seen consolidation, you've seen acquisition by hospitals. I'll talk in a minute why an imaging center is, uh, is an attractive uh, acquisition candidate for hospitals. but. Imaging centers have had a, a tough go of it, and we need imaging centers. We need imaging centers uh, for a lot of different reasons. So the advantage for reimbursement is for the hospitals. And the reason is, under HOPS, their reimbursement, uh, all these things are happening to imaging centers out here under Part B don't apply to hospitals. So hospitals don't have to contend with any of this. As a matter of fact, 
Hospitals have had reimbursement increases in the HOPS fee schedule. You saw the last seven or eight years what's happened to imaging centers through Congress and what's going to continue to happen. So hospitals have a clear advantage over reimbursement. That reimbursement extends also to um, the fees that, that hospitals get to charge. Hospitals charge a facility fee, that's a, it, which is actually a pretty big fee. It, it covers all the hospital's um, overhead costs uh, for the imaging tests that they add on to that, that, that imaging centers, freestanding imaging centers cannot add on to that. So w when you boil all this down, the difference between being on the HOPS fee schedule versus the, the Medicare physician fee schedule is, is pretty, pretty considerable. Um, you know, imaging centers typically, ch or, or, I'm sorry, hospital imaging centers typically charge anywhere from 250, 350, 400 percent of Medicare compared to a freestanding imaging center. So a freestanding imaging center, you know, is probably going to contract somewhere between Medicare and 130, 140 percent, whereas um, uh, a hospital-based imaging center that is negotiating on percent off-bill charges, so they're going to get 30 percent off-bill charges, probably. That seems to be the average in the data we look at. And that 30% uh, off bill charges is probably going to be 280, 300 percent of Medicare. So it is it is a considerable difference in the the methodology. The reason I want to take this little bit of a dive to talk about the methodology is it's important to know it's different fee schedules, and it's different things that apply in terms of the legislation that has uh, has focused on outpatient imaging centers. So in addition to that. If you own an imaging center, your ability to get a rate increase, your ability to tell Cigna that you want another 5, 8, 10 percent or Aetna or United or the Blues or whatever, forget it. If you're a hospital, you're going to get your 15, 20 percent um, uh, rate increase every year, most likely. But you're not going to with an imaging center because you're kind of slotted in on the floor. So tough sledding for imaging centers. Hospitals have a definite um, cost advantage in terms of reimbursement uh, uh, against them. I want to show you some averages. And you can see, looking at this, uh, the, the top three MRI, CT, PET, see what hospital reimbursement looks like versus outpatient imaging center reimbursement. You can see what the differential is. I mean, uh, it, it's 100% uh, almost and, and, and more. It's the exact same type test, same type of equipment, probably the same number of technicians, in some cases, the same radiology group that reads for the imaging center that also reads for the hospitals. But look at the difference in cost. And the difference in cost is all because of those different fee schedules and, and the uh, constraints that have been put on, on imaging centers. Radiology, huge revenue producer for hospitals. They do not want to let a test out of the system if they can help it. This is a, an older slide, but it, it, it really shows what radiology is worth to a hospital. These are, this is outpatient uh, service line revenue for hospitals. And you can see on average, radiology is almost 40% of the profit that a hospital produces. That's huge. There's nothing else that comes near that. So um, hospitals do everything that they can to keep those diagnostic imaging tests within their facilities because that's what feeds the engine, um, our, our radiology tests. Let me give you some examples. I, I had asked my folks to pull five claims. I said, just go in and pull the first five that pop up and give me an example of what, uh, what the technical and professional costs look like. Now, in radiology, you basically you get two claims. You get the technical claim that comes from the imaging center, the hospital imaging center, or the freestanding imaging center. Then you get a professional claim that comes from the uh, radiologist that reads the study. The both of those combined is really your true your true cost. Now you have a lot of imaging centers that will that will bill global, so one fee for the technical and professional. But we put those together to show you this actual TPA claim data, and pulled some pulled some different markets to show you what the claim is, what the build amount is, and what the PPO allowed amount. So after the PPO repriced it. And you can see that in most of these claims, they're two to $3,000, $4,000. 
CT abdomen and pelvis, um, after it's allowed, at $4,200. And we see this every single day. As a matter of fact, I asked, I said, go through, because I got that one slide, I said, go through, those are big markets, so pull, pull five big markets, five middle markets, five small markets, and show me what the build and allowed amounts look like. You can see this is actual TPA claims data. We work with about 60 TPAs across the country. And you can see what the, um, what the build amount looks like, the PPO, what the PPO repriced it at, and then what our provider price was at an imaging center that would be within five miles of where the test was performed and what the savings would have been. And I, I added this up real quick, but the, the bill amount that the TPAs were billed were 59698 so 60000 The allowed amount was 43.3, about 27% discount. So if you take what our allowed amount is, 12100 it's about 80% 80, 80 discount. And a savings of $31,000 on 15 tests. So I think, what was that? around $2,000 or $2,000 a test. And all you're doing, the patient gets the test that their doctor has ordered. They probably get it at somewhere it's more convenient. And, and all you're doing is switching the site of service. That's it. You're just moving it from a hospital to a freestanding imaging center within five miles. And I guarantee it's probably the same radiology group that reads to the hospital um, in, in, in a lot of cases. So. The difference, the disparity in pricing is significant. And just moving the test, not denying it, not saying you can't have it done, just moving the test can save that much money. So why doesn't consumers, or why don't consumers shop radiology? I mean, I can tell you, we, when we're not successful in, in scheduling a test, and let me just tell you real quickly, my company is a radiology network company, and typically we're on the back of the ID card with simple signage that says for MRI, CT, or PET scans, call 1-800. So we get calls from employers, uh, thousands and thousands of employers every day, and we schedule imaging tests. That's all we do. And, and we get these calls, and we collect the reasons why we're not successful in terms of scheduling a test or moving it away. And uh, it's interesting, but I want to share that with you. Before I do, though, this is a, uh, when I was flying out here, this was in the USA Today, and they had that little article on transparency, and you can see where they've, they're going to incise the patient, but they've got a, a dartboard up there of pricing. And that is so true. I mean, an imaging center, they have a cash price, a walk-in price, but that cash price can change based on how much money you say that you can pay. It can change based on any type of insurance reimbursement that you might get. It can change based on whether you are covered by Cigna or Aetna or United or Blue Cross or Coventry or PHCS or Multiplan or whatever. There's a different fee schedule for everybody. It's not based on volume. It's based on how good you negotiate. That's what it's based on. And it's based on what the imaging center can get. Um, so it is, it is all over the board. Hospitals pretty set with the um, exception of the example that I just gave about their carrier contracts. Again, not based on volume typically or charge masters, just based on what the hospital thinks they can get and, and, and how good the negotiator is from the, um, from the insurance company. There is um, a kind of a, a groundswell happening with, with payers, with carriers, with TPAs saying this doesn't make sense. Why would you pay this when you can be paying this? And they're trying to educate their consumers. It's very, very difficult to do. And the reason why is that for 95% of all imaging tests, they're, they're directed by physicians. Uh, of the three quarters of you that raised your hands and said you had had an imaging test, I want to ask you to raise your hands again, except raise your hands if you went to where your physician office told you to go for that imaging test. So most of you. And, and that's typically the way it happens. The doctor examines you, orders the test, puts the order in your file, puts your file in the back of the exam room door, goes to the next exam room to see the next patient, 
file goes up to the front desk and it goes to a scheduling clerk or a UR nurse or the office manager, whomever, that, that then will schedule that test. And depending on where they send their tests, and four out of every five tests are sent to a, to a hospital, depending on where they send their tests, that, that's typically where you're going to go. It's interesting when, when we are talking to a physician office and the physician office says, we, you know, the doctor sends all their stuff to Baptist Hospital or everything goes to Vanderbilt. Well, significant difference in out-of-pocket costs for the, the insured going to Vanderbilt versus going to an imaging center that's a mile away from Vanderbilt. And I'll say, well, the doctor doesn't like that imaging center. Why? Doesn't like the quality of the scans. We've never had a, we never had a scan asked to be redone there. Doesn't like the radiologists that read there. Okay. Well, I don't understand why, because they're the same radiology group that reads at one of Vanderbilt's facilities. Well, it's da 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 So it's, it, it, there's a lot of pushback that occurs. And actually, I can tell you, I, I work for a company that owned and operated imaging centers. Hospitals work with, um, work with their physician groups or their affiliate groups to train them how to keep their test or diagnostic tests within the system. It's just that that's part of it. So that's the single biggest thing that you run into is that the physician is trying to drive it to a hospital facility, hospital-owned facility, four out of every five you know, times. Or, or the physician office owns the practice. Um, or when you talk about pricing transparency, and, and it, you know, pricing transparency to, um, to a consumer around healthcare is different it's a bit like buying a car and you go into the sales manager's office and, and all this stuff keeps going back and forth about about the cost of, of how it's going to work. It's a bit like that. So the transparency, you, you kind of get caught in the web and you don't understand it. Or you don't have a, 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 a real incentive in your benefit plan to try to pursue you know, the best deal out there. Boy, I can tell you, folks that we see on high deductible plans are all over this. I mean, all over it, and uh, and and you know, with good reason, with good cause. So our belief is that consumerism is the answer. Is educating the consumers. It was like Ross was saying um, that that's really what's going to drive where selection is made is by having an informed consumer understanding what the difference is in cost, understanding the impact of the benefit plan, and understanding their own out-of-pocket costs. You know, I, I, I heard this uh, at a conference not long ago, you know, shifting mindset from entitlement to engagement. And I thought that's, a, that's, that's really a, a perfect way to couch what we're trying to do. And we're trying to educate consumers around the cost and quality of imaging around the most efficient and cost-effective places to have that imaging performed and, and, and ultimately uh, the convenience factor that, that goes along with that. I, I mentioned a minute ago, I don't want to give you a sales commercial, I'm not going to, but that's what my company does. We move imaging tests, high-tech imaging, MRI, CT, PET, out of the more expensive hospital facilities into freestanding imaging facilities and, and that's where um, that's where our savings comes from. Pretty easy program, it's strictly voluntary. So if the member doesn't want to do it or a physician office pushes back, that's fine. I mean, we collect that data and we can use that when we're sitting down with, um, you know, with Holly or Tom or Marsha to talk about different physician groups and, and some techniques we might be able to use to get them uh, to, to, to look at working with us. But um, it is, uh, you know, it's a pretty easy program, and it saves a lot of money. So, you know, typically, I mentioned, we get the call, we work with the physician office, or if the patient's calling, then we get the information, we, we contact the physician office, and we work to get the, the test moved. We're successful about 80% of the time. So, um, it works, uh, and, uh, you know, here's here's a client uh, client results 319 tests, and you can see 70% savings. Again, all we're doing is moving the site of service. We're we're really good at that. That's all we do every day, and, and you can see what it's worth uh, to this client about 
uh, $1,300 uh, a test. So let's say that after I get through and, and you guys hit the casino floor, let's say there's a slot machine arm injury amongst one of you. You see the, the, uh, the moving star there. That's the exact coordinates of the Monte Carlo. And you see the little push pins of where we have contractor providers in, in the city of Las Vegas. So I don't know how many are there, um, 15, 16, 17, but you can see within 10 miles we have that many. And actually within, what, one mile, two miles, I guess, of, of the hotel, we have a facility. So you don't have to go to the hospital. You have to spend that money. You can, you can save that $1,300, $1,400 and use it in the slot machine with, with your left arm. Um, but that's how our program works.